Previously on Exploring with Mr. Power. Mr. Power is the point of Mr. Power. That's, um, that's, that's the wrong one. What type of clothes do clouds wear? Go Birmingham. Thunder wear. Clouds are basically water which has come from the ground. Makes it perfect for boats to travel down. A woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Your toilet. What about snow? It's like a river, but it's made by humans. What will we learn about this week? I can't see any birds here at all. I've been looking for ages. Oh, I didn't know you recorded. Right, this week we're going to be looking at birds. And along the way, as we go exploring, I'm going to show you quite a few different types of birds as well. Some of them you may know, and some of them might be totally new to you. So, if you're ready to go exploring, then come with me. You. I'll be needing these today. Right, the birds I'm going to show you today are really common in the UK, but I'm going to show you a really simple trick and split them into three really easy categories. Type number one is the tweety bird, and those type of birds live in trees, they're really small, and they tweet. You'll be seeing quite a few of them today. Number two are the ducky birds, a bit like a duck. They can float on water and they swim. We'll be seeing some of those in today's video. And type number three are the strong birds. And they're the type of birds which mighty other types of animals. They might be really big and tall. And if you're lucky, you might see one of those in today's video. Now, as I show you today's birds, keep those three types in your head. And every bird I show you, have a think, what do they look like? What can you see? How would you describe them? And now we're going to start with this bird. And it's a duck, you might call it, but it's actually called a mallard. Have a practice at saying that. Mallard. Now here is a male or a boy mallard. And what can you see? What colours? The way you can see a male mallard is because of its grey body and green head. Now let's look at a female or a girl mallard. They look slightly different. Have a look. How are they different then? The girl has no green or grey, but it's all brown all over. What is the same about them? They both have beaks and they're both the same size. Now mallards are about 30 to 40 centimetres big, which is about that size. So they're not that big actually. And they're obviously a type of duck and they float on the water. I wonder what type of bird they could be. They eat berries, they eat plants, they eat insects, and even different types of seed. Now let's have a listen to what they sound like. They're actually really friendly, but don't think that you can just go and touch them though, because they're still wild animals and they're not pets. Let's look at this video that I did today. These are little ducklings, baby mallards. Look how small they are. Can you see further away? There are their mum and dad. One is brown and the other green and grey, just like what we looked at before. They're very cute, aren't they? Now we're gonna take a look at a Canadian goose. What country do you think a Canadian goose could come from? Well, I'll tell you more about that later in the video. Now, the male and females of a Canadian goose look the same. They are much bigger than a mallard. How would you describe this type of bird? It has a black head and neck, but it has white cheeks on its face and it has a brown body. They also have a really long neck. But a Canadian goose can actually measure up to 110 centimetres long, which is about that big, so a lot bigger than a mallard. Now, let's have a listen to what they sound like. Mm -hmm. 
they are really loud when they call to each other. And people who actually live near Canadian geese get really annoyed at them because they are so loud. Canadian geese also eat grass, leaves and different types of seeds. And here is another video when I was walking, I saw a mum, dad and their baby geese. Now baby geese have a name and they're called goslings. Goslings. They will swim the day after they've been born and they'll start flying at just two months old. Now let's have a very different type of bird. Take a look at this one. This is called a heron. Heron. And these are very different looking. How would you describe this type of bird? Look how big and sharp their beaks look. A beak is the long bit on a bird's face. Look at its neck. It's like the letter S. They have a few colours. They have grey, white, black and an orange beak. And look how long their legs are as well. Now herons are a really strong type of bird and that means they can eat other animals. They might eat mice, they can eat rats and they can even eat smaller birds, including ducklings and goslings, like the ones I've just shown you, which is really sad. But don't worry, because that's why the babies stay with their mum and dad, so that they can always be protected. Now, herons can be up to 120 centimetres tall, and that's pretty big. That might even be taller than you. Whew. Now, can you get that camera away from me? It's a bit close. Now, here is my really tall heron, but don't you worry. It wouldn't eat you because you're far too big to swallow. Now, you can see herons all year round as well, and this is what they sound like. Here are three of Mr. Power's points. Have I mentioned that you can feed bread to birds? No, I haven't. And that's because it's not very healthy for them. You can feed them anything I've already mentioned, including fat balls like this one, and bits of fruit and potatoes are also really good for birds, but not chips, obviously. Canadian geese come from Canada and when it gets a bit too cold for them, then they will fly to another area or country and they can fly up to 40 miles per hour and they can fly up to 1,500 miles in one day. Now that is hard work. Some birds may look calm, but they will actually attack you if you go near their babies. So make sure you stay well away from them. Here is a swan attacking a person in a boat who went too close to her signets. And this Canada goose attacks so that she can protect her babies too. Ouch. Now let's get back to exploring more types of birds. You will have probably heard of the name of our next bird. It's called a magpie, like when you magpie an idea in school. That's because magpies are known for taking things back to their nests, a bit like taking an idea for your writing in English. Here is a magpie. They're not that big, but look at the colours. How would you describe a magpie? Well, quite simple. They're black and white. Now a magpie is around 30 centimetres long, which is about that big. So they're not too big and they live in trees. Now because a magpie takes a lot of things, that means it also eats a lot of things as well. From plants, small animals, to even food left on the street. If it can be eaten, a magpie will definitely take it. And here is what a magpie sounds like. Mm, that's quite a loud and nasty sound. And that reminds me, magpies aren't exactly the friendliest of birds. They're not that big or strong, but they can actually be really mean and nasty to other birds. They don't actually harm humans, but they don't have many bird friends. 
But I tell you what they do have, they have a lot of personality. Our next bird is a seagull. Although you might call it a seagull, but the actual name for this bird is a herring gull. Herring gull. And what do you notice about these birds? Yep, they're white, grey and black. But what bright colours can you see? Yep, that's right. A big yellow beak with a little bit of red on. And herring gulls aren't that big. They're about 50 centimetres, so a little bit bigger. But they fly around a lot as well, looking for food. They eat insects, they eat fish and they eat plants as well. Sadly, they'll also eat rubbish that's left on the ground and that is really bad for them and it can even kill them. That's why you shouldn't litter. Now, people sometimes call a herring gull a seagull because it's a type of gull that is by the sea. But actually, you can see a herring gull by any water. You can see it in lakes, rivers and even, even canals. Join Mr Power in episode one as he takes you on an epic adventure down the Birmingham Canal Network. Anyway, uh, here is what a herring gull sounds like. And you can see them all year round during any season. How cool is that? Now it's time for a very elegant bird. This is a swan, or to be more specific, it's called a mute swan. Mute swan. These are really easy to spot as well because they are white all over. And if you look, they've got an orange beak and a bit of black around their eyes. They also have a really long neck, a bit like the Canadian goose that we looked at earlier. Now, if a mute swan is born in England, it will usually stay in England all its life. It will stay with its mum and dad for two years and then it'll go off on its own and make a new life. But some mute swans actually fly over from other countries to England because it's warmer and they can get food easy. Now, a mute swan is up to 150 centimetres long. Let me get my tape measure out again, which is about this big. So, pretty large. And this is what they sound like. And here is a mum mute swan with her babies. A baby swan is called a cygnet. Cygnet. There are a lot of swans in the UK because many people protect them and see them as pretty and nice to look at. We've learned about a range of different birds in today's video. Now take my online quiz and see if you can get in the top three on the leaderboard. Go to tiny.cc forward slash Mr. Power Birds or click the link in the description box below. That's all for me this week. I hope you've enjoyed exploring with me and I'll see you next time.